Welcome to the Art and Brie channel. This is a day in the life of homestead cows. It's not gonna be a completely sequential video. It actually starts one morning with feeding the cows hay, and then it ends the next morning when we milk the cows. My aim is just to show you what is basically the boring life of cows and some of the things they enjoy. The cows have probably been awake for several hours and they've slept right out here in the hay. You can hear one moving down the hill because I'm about to milk. This is actually the second morning and he's separated out, but you'll find out why he's separated a little later on in this video. And it's kind of surprisingly funny considering how big he is. So without further ado, we're gonna jump right in and just kind of show you all of our interactions with the animals throughout a 24 hour period. It's a cold late November morning on our little Appalachian family farm here in North Carolina. I wanna show you something really cute. Uh, at least I think this is really cute. There's a mama cow, Alice. Her heifer, who's about over, gosh, what, 18 months old? And then back here is mama's adopted steer. His name is Moon Pie, and Mama Cow Alice's new baby. His name is Texas. And these guys are just hanging out together. It's the guys hanging out together. Look, why are they buddies? Why are they buddies? Moon Pie the steer, he's going into the freezer soon. He was a little dairy bull calf and dairies don't want bull calves because bull calves don't give milk and you only need one bowl to breed a huge number of cows on a dairy. Many of them use AI, artificial insemination, so dairies are always selling their bull calves, so that's how we got him about 18 months ago. That's just, I can't remember time, that's just a guesstimation. But he's, uh, he's about ready to butcher now. But he's buddies. <laughs> he's buddies with Texas the calf. <laughs> Texas the bull calf. The boys are hanging out together in the back. Sleeping in this cold weather. Hey buddy, how are you? Hey Texas. It's going to be the same story for Texas the bull calf. He'll get up, we'll castrate him, he'll be a steer and we'll raise him out here for our meat about a year and a half from now. Well, 12 months to 24 months, but about a year and a half, he'll go in the freezer as well. I have a little idea why I think they're buddies, and I'll tell you. First off, they are, they're adopted brothers, so of course they're buddies, right? Splat, splat. Second of all, oh, I'm getting splatter. Second of all, Moon Pie has decided he's a baby again, and he's been nursing on Alice, which he did when he was little. She took him on. We called him Calf 236 at first because of his ear tag, but he remembers and he's nursing. Is Heifer nursing? No, but he's a big baby, so he's nursing. And Texas, also nursing. So I think they're just buddies, nursing buddies. You remember what it's like, don't you? <laughs> he saw us milking her one day and he just jumped right on. Kind of funny, he's taller than her by about six inches. You know, the first thing I thought when I saw him nursing was, he's gonna steal all the milk. and. Well, that's true. 
it's, there's a simple solution to that, and that is when we're gonna milk, we just separate him and the calf for about 12 hours, and then there's milk for us. My next concern though, and we, we asked around about it, kind of two concerns. Number one is that Texas, the bull calf, he's, he's in a critical period in his life. He needs to get milk, he needs to grow. And so the question is, would he get enough? So far, he's gotten enough. He's rowdy, he's growing, he's active. Um, we see him nursing. But the other concern was that the steer would tear up her teats because of how big he is, how big his teeth are, uh, how aggressive he can be, but also just the angle. He's nursing from really high. And so far, we've checked him every day. So far, that's not been a problem. So it's been kind of this blessing in disguise because what it means is in this time in our life, we have twins, you know, they got out of the NICU, what, eight weeks ago, and it's just been insane. We actually don't have to show up every day and milk because her udder stays floppy, stays loose, um, because that steer, he's doing us a huge favor, honestly, drinking milk. Um, but don't, that won't last too long. We're, he's gonna go in uh, January. He'll end up in the freezer. I'm feeding these cows hay all across the pasture and I'm working my way up, I'm trying to feed them real high now. The higher you feed them in the pasture, the higher their manure ends up. And you can see all down here, there's manure and there's very little up here because if there's not grass to eat up here, there's not a lot of reason for the cows to be up here. But when you bring the hay up, the cows come up, they hang out here, they drop their manure here, and it helps out this area of the pasture, which historically has been worse and thinner up on the high ground. Come on, mama. Little Texas really isn't eating much hay, but he does like to play with it. And he likes to butt it. It's something, it's entertaining for him. Yeah. And mommy is just enjoying the sun. Good girl. You're a good cow. As cows go. Morning to evening, and we're coming back to the cows. What do you bring to feed the cows? Graham crackers. Graham crackers. Have these cows ever had graham crackers before? No. No. The cows are out of minerals, and I'm opening up this. This is Redmond salt. This is not sponsored, but we it could be. We uh, really like it. It's Redmond's with selenium. It's for animals, but we actually use Redmond salt for almost all of our salt. This is the bulk of the salt they get. And they do get some other minerals, especially in the spring when they're uh, grasses. High, they get a high mag. Here, let me see. You got graham crackers? So don't give them the graham crackers yet. Let me give them their minerals and then I'll let bring you in there, okay? I don't want to go in here. Oh really, why not? That's a good fight. <laughs> they always fight, they always fight. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Hold it up higher so he's not afraid. Hold it above that fence so he's not afraid, okay? So we pull him in? He's ever had a grip. <laughs> I'm not sure if they want one. We'll try mommy in just a minute, okay? I'm gonna get the steer in the barn so we can milk in the morning. It doesn't take much. Oop. Oh no. It doesn't take much grain to get them interested. Come on, let's go. Just three handfuls of grain is motivation enough for those cows. I uh, just put the steer in the barn only. And 
That's like I mentioned this morning. Just because he's emptying out Alice the cow's udder, we're not going to get any milk as long as he's on there. So um, we separate him overnight, or we could we could separate him for longer even. Then there'll be milk in the morning. Miracle! Look at that. Colder, probably. Okay, we're pretty much done for the day. I was hoping to do a little bit more and actually get the little bull calf uh, on a halter. Grace has been working halter training him and it's pretty cool to see. Uh, I wanted to bring you along in that process because I really enjoyed seeing it myself um, as I saw it the first time just a couple years ago. It actually did it the first time and she's working with this calf again, starting really early actually, which is interesting. I never started this early. Um, so maybe we can squeeze that in in the morning when we milk. All right, see you. See you in the morning, guys. We got to put that fire on head. All right, guys. Okay, so it's the next morning, and um, we're here, back where this video started, actually. Um, and guess what? Moon Pie, the steer, he's in the barn. He's not happy. We've done this before he kind of knows the drill the thing with cows is that more than anything else they thrive on connection so even though he can see the other cows from where he's at he is not happy to not be right beside them so I'll try to keep his separation pretty short I'm gonna go ahead and milk and we'll get him out of the barn um, technically as soon as the mama cow's out of the pasture, I can let him out and so he can be closer to them. So we'll do that. Uh, this is a friendly cow. Um, he was bottle fed. And so he's basically pettable. A pettable steer, which is kind of ironic because we're going to eat him. But he's a sweetie. <laughs> All right. I'm going to break this ice. It's not really necessary. The cows can do this, but... Why not make it just a little bit easier for you? We'll get a little bit of grain to lure mom down here. We're not giving her a lot because she's transitioning. Then I'm going to feed the geese just a little bit, scatter down where the cows will get it. I want to actually um, halt her continue halter training this little bull calf texas this morning and last night i asked my kids i was like hey where's the halter for the cow it's going to do this last night guess where they told me it's right there it's right here you see it it's right there <laughs> that's, that's it's on the barn that's where the halter is i mean that makes sense right i did not want to climb the barn <laughs> I'm afraid it's tied on the upper end as well. Oh, man. Let's see. Maybe I can catch it. Break. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh. All right, it turned out that I hooked it through with the scythe and caught it and pulled it down without cutting it at all. Come on, Mommy. I got your grain right here. Come on down. Okay, it took a minute, but I got her in. She's eating a little grain. She really, really didn't want to get in this morning. Pretty dirty. Got to clean her up here. I'm going to try to get him on the halter next, though. He put me on my butt out there. That's okay. I may catch him when he comes out to his mom while I'm milking. We'll just brush her down really good. Less hair in your milk. If you like hair in your milk and manure, just don't brush your cow.
Alright, fence is up, and now we can just let the steer out so he's less stressed. He's got hay and water in there. He just wants to be with the others. Come on, Biggin. Alright, give me just a little more because you're a good girl. The funny thing about the calf and me not being able to catch it this morning, well, and the, ca the bull calf winning, I really wanted that in this video. The funny thing about it though is that my daughter, Grace, is the calf charmer. Now, other kids can do it too, but uh, she's just super good at it. Wow, girl. She's dirty because I think she slept in the barn. I thought she slept out in the pasture. I need to make it so she can't get in the, this back barn back here at all. I thought you'd slept in the pasture, girl. Normally they sleep in the pasture, but if we leave a stall open or something, they will sometimes sneak in there. But Grace is the cow charmer, so even though I wanted to, that to be in this video, it's not gonna be in this video because Grace is up helping mom this morning. I had to get more rags because she's so dirty this morning. So far this milking's not going great. I really wish for the purposes of a life in the day of a cow, Brie was the one milking, but honestly, here's the honest truth. Brie let me come down here this morning because this is like a really chill thing to do. She was like, why don't you go milk the cow this morning? So even though there's a little bit of stress involved, and the cow kicking over the bucket and potentially not getting milk. I'm gonna try to avoid that. I'm just milking with one hand now because she's so impatient, so I can get that bucket out of the way quickly. Um, potentially there's a little stress there. Overall, coming down here first thing in the morning and just hanging out with the cows is a really nice thing to do. But Bree's better at all of this. Bree, my wife, she's better at all of this. All right, <laughs> and part of the reason the cows is misbehaving is because it's me um, because I'm so slow it took me a long it took me longer to get set up and longer to clean her I had to run up to the house to get rags because she was so dirty my goal has just been to get a gallon this whole time and she just kicked a bunch so all right let's go girly but that uh that little calf actually emptied out a lot last night so Here's someone who's not crying over spilt milk. Okay, barely got a tiny bit of milk because I milked and milked and then she kicked over the bucket. That's just something that happens sometimes. Alice is just getting back into the routine of milking, so that's okay. Well guys, that's a day in the life of the homestead cow. I didn't capture everything I wanted to, but when it comes down to it, I see that from the cow's perspective, we're just kind of an inconvenience. You know, cow doesn't want to be haltered, trained. The cow doesn't really want to get in the milking stand. They will, and they can learn uh, to get in a routine of getting milked. And Alice is a great cow and she will get into the routine better and become more patient, uh, thus hopefully not kicking the bucket. But what's the life of a cow? It's honestly eating, laying down resting, drinking water, and laying in the shade in the sun, depending on the temperature. It's really, I think, a serene life. And one of the reasons I love cows so much is they're very calm, they love social interaction, they thrive with other cows. They're pretty amazing animals to keep. Extremely easy animals to keep, honestly, as animals go. I would say they require a similar amount of care as uh, many smaller animals, chickens, rabbits, and they provide a huge amount of um, abundance for our farm in the form of meat and on most days that we milk, milk. Um, Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in a video soon. All right. Bye-bye.